Welcome to this Farm Accounting 101 presentation on QuickBooks for Farmers. Today we will be covering Lesson 4, Introduction and Sample Entries number 7 and 8. I'm Robert Page, CPA and Regional Extension Agent with the Farm and Agribusiness Management Team with the Alabama Cooperative Extension System at Auburn University. The ACES Farm Analysis Program worked with the Alabama farmers for over 20 years, helping them to develop and maintain accurate financial and production records. In developing this series, we reviewed the different types of checks and deposits made in farm record keeping by these farmer clients and eventually selected 10 very typical farm accounting entries. We believe if you can learn these 10 sample entries, you will find the majority of accounting entries on your farm to be similar. In today's lesson, we will be reviewing the next two entries for Lesson 4, write a check for payment on farm loan and record a deposit for farm crop sales. The other entries are covered in other lessons. Lesson 6 will cover useful financial and year-end closing notes that farmers should find useful. As a reminder, these 10 accounting entries are the same entries used in the ACES Excel for Farmers YouTube presentations. For those viewers who prefer using an Excel spreadsheet to keep farm records, please visit the ACES YouTube channel for Farm Accounting 101 Excel for Farmers. A word of caution. These lessons assume the viewer has some familiarity with QuickBooks. Our objective is to show how these sample transactions can be entered into QuickBooks quickly and accurately to produce useful farm financial and production records. In other words, this is not an introductory course in QuickBooks. Intuit and other vendors offer a wide array of training videos and manuals on this excellent software. As we have said in previous lessons, the Farm Accounting 101 series is intended to help Alabama producers to improve their farm financial literacy. In this QuickBooks for Farmers series, we are expecting three different types of viewers to be watching. There are farmers or other agricultural producers, there are farm family members who are untrained in accounting, and there are management accountants who are trained in both accounting and business record keeping who may or may not be part of the farm family. Any assumptions or conclusions or observations made during this presentation are based on my years of experience working with farmers, their families, and their accountant tax providers tax preparers in the ACES Farm Analysis Program, as well as my time teaching ACES Financial Record Keeping small classes, as additionally my time with public accounting prior to joining Extension. If we're going to discuss farm accounting, we need a sample farm QuickBooks file. So we created the ACES Poultry Farm Number 1. The key features of this sample farm include over 500 sample checks, deposits, and other transactions posted for this farm. An expanded use of, excuse me, an expanded chart of accounts based on standard farm analysis client files. Use of the class option to classify income expenses to one of the three farm enterprises, poultry, livestock, or row crop. This class feature really can help us see which farm enterprises make the most money for the farmer and which enterprises need to be reviewed for possible changes. We will see some sample reports using this class option shortly. Now let's move on to sample entry number seven, making a payment on a farm loan. What are the facts? In this example, the farmer is making a quarterly payment on the used New Holland T4.75 tractor loan which was discussed earlier in Lesson 2. The payment amount to the local ag lender is $1743.75. We will separate the payment into two parts, principal interest, excuse me, into two parts, principal and interest. So now we'll change the screen view to QuickBooks. In this example, we type in local ag lender. The dollar amount of the check is 1743.75. Now, a word to be aware of. 
If you notice when we type in the local ag lender, we had three different accounts come down at the bottom of the screen. That's because the local ag lender is tied to multiple loans and we have some memorized transactions against this ag lender so we need to uh, use the correct account numbers. So in this example, the first one is for the loan amount. So which loan are we talking about? Well this ag lender has an operating loan there's the New Holland loan and this one is for a house and land loan that the farmer has. So we select Ag Lender New Holland Tractor T4.7375 loan number 123. The principal amount is 17 excuse me is 1575.33 So we've indicated on our memo line that this is the principal payment quarterly New Holland T4.75 loan. As a note, see loan statement for details because we're going to assume in this example we have received the loan statement from the bank that we're using to allocate principal and interest. Once again, since this is a balance sheet item, we're not going to charge this to a particular class account where it could be livestock, row crop, or poultry. This is a balance sheet account. We don't use classes for the anything there. But we will on the next line. We've talked before about having a separate interest account for each individual loan. And so in this particular case, we are making a loan on the New Holland tractor. So do we have currently so far a setup for the loan? No we do not. So we're going to have to add a new account number. And this is an expense account. And we'll just simply call it uh, for the time being we won't use an account number. We'll call this interest New Holland T4.75 loan. And this is a sub account of interest farm loans. So this would be, we could use 033 up here as our account number. We could use 033 004 or we could use 033 uh, the last three of the loan number. Uh, if we had that information handy. So in this particular case we're just going to um, it's a sub account of interest farm loans 033-1115. Now as you can see I've just typed in under the description that this is the interest on the New Holland T4.75 loan which is a 36 month loan. Save and close. And if I pull this over here a little bit more you can see that 033 is the, is the prime account, 033-005 is the sub account, and we're going to put in here that the interest amount is 168.42. interest payment quarterly New Holland T4.75 loan. You may ask why are we doing all this memoing? Memo here, memo here on what are we paying? It's because when the producer or farmer is reviewing 
uh, the profit and loss report looking for errors and omissions or things that need to be changed, we need to make everything as clear as we possibly can when he or she is reviewing uh, these documents later on. So this particular one, since this is interest on a tractor, this is a row crop piece of equipment, so the interest is going to be charged to row crop. Now let me also point, we've talked earlier about the statement that we're using to justify the breakdown of this versus this. Um, and so we would simply scan that statement and attach it to this particular check so that if we looked at this later on, here's the check, there's the statement, and we could just easily view it. Okay, now it is ready, and we're going to uh, delete this line because we don't need it. Print the check, and save and new. We know that there is one item, which is the balance sheet item, that has not been assigned to class. That is correct. Now let's take a look at it from the accounting point of view. Here's the accounting entry for that tractor loan entry. As you can see, loan payable, ag lender, New Holland T4.75, is a long-term liability account. And we have debited it for 1575.33. When you debit a loan payable, that means that the balance of the loan payable goes down. On the other hand, we've also got an interest New Holland loan and an interest expense account is also debited for $168.42. That's an expense going up. And the offsetting entry is cash to farm checking, which is a current asset. And that is that $1743.75 has left the checking account. As a reminder note, we just discussed this. Rather than using just one interest expense account, we recommend setting up an interest expense subaccount for each farm loan outstanding. Using this methodology, each farm loan has their own loan payable QuickBooks chart of account listing and a matching loan interest expense. This helps the accountant to verify or adjust the year-end QuickBooks balances to the Ag Lenders December 30, 2021 loan balance report and tax documents for this New Holland loan. Now let's move on to sample entry number 8, Recording Farm Crop Sales. What are the facts? In this example, the farmer has sold corn to the local grain elevator and is recording to the deposit into the farm bank account. There are two methods that we're going to be covering today on how to enter this deposit. One, the first method is a simple bank deposit entry only, and method two is creating a sales receipt with a follow-up bank deposit. Method two introduces us to the sales report feature and QuickBooks. So then let's change to the other QuickBooks screen. Now we're going to go into record deposits right over here. And our entry will be to the bank and we put a notation here. This is selling corn sales deposit. So our account here in the middle is corn sales. So we scroll down through the chart of accounts. And there we have the standard farm analysis crop sales listing. Whereas the 
default uh, chart of accounts in QuickBooks may only have one crop or feed sales account. We have all these different sub accounts in the standard farm analysis chart of accounts. And so we're going to be using corn sales 001020. Now, what else do we want to put on here? Well, this is 614 bushels at 3.55 per bushel. And this is row crop. And the dollar amount of this sale is 2179.70. Now, just as a reminder, these are sample made up entries. These are not current corn uh, sale prices. This is just a made up deposit strictly for your information. So, this is where it's going to be deposited to the local farm checking account, and we can simply save and close. If we take a look at our check register, there it is. 217970, charged corn sales, and it's a deposit for corn sales deposit. Very simple, very straightforward. Now the second method we want to talk about is using this feature right here which is creating a sales receipt and let's just walk through it very quickly. In this example we're going to sell corn Do we currently have corn in our list? We do not. So we'll add new. Corn. Now if we wanted to enable the unit of measure, uh, if you're using QuickBooks Accountant software, which I'm using, this option is available. If you're using QuickBooks Pro software, units of measure is probably not on there. So we will not use the unit of measure, we'll just simply type it here. We also don't know the rate on corn sales changes from day to day, week to week, month to month, so we don't would put a rate in here. The only thing that we do is we point it to the correct listing in our chart of accounts, corn sales. Simple as that. Alright, so we have corn, we have bushels of corn, and up here we could say local grain elevator. And the quantity we're looking at is 614 bushels. This is for row crop, and the dollar amount is 2179.70 and see the system once I type that and hit tab the three dollars and fifty cents fifty five cents per bushel is automatically calculated by the software so we do the sales receipt so we do save and close Now you notice we've done this. If we look at this and come down here, we now record the deposit. And notice there is a little one right here. So we click on this. It shows the deposit we want to enter. Press OK. And it comes to the undeposited funds. This is corn sales deposit. Record corn sales deposit from grain elevator. Once again, this is a row crop and save and close. Now, what's different about this? Well, let's just take a look at this report under sales 
and we look at sales by item summary. There is our corn sales for the month of January 2021. 614 bushels, there's a dollar amount percentage of sales. Now, if you want to keep accurate unit production sales records, you really ought to strongly consider using this sales receipt feature because this allows, if you have five years worth of information in QuickBooks, I could simply change these dates up here from here to here and look at five years of corn sales and have all the information straight at my fingertips. This is an excellent item that many farmers can take advantage of to really give them some very good production records right at their fingertips. So now I have two deposits in here for 2179.70. So we're going to take, we're going to keep the first one and we're going to delete the first example we showed you. Okay, now let's move back to our PowerPoint presentation. What's the entry look like from the accounting point of view? Cash, farm checking, which is a current asset, is debited or increases by 21.79.70. Corn sales, which is an income account, also increases with a credit entry of 21.79.70. Thus, our total debits and credits are 21.79.70. And a reminder note, for those farmers who do not use the sales receipt option for crop sales, which was our method two, we strongly recommend recording at least the number of bushels sold and the price per bushel in the memo field of each deposit entry for crop sales. We close by saying thank you for watching Lesson 4, QuickBooks for Farmers. This segment of the Farm Accounting 101 series has been produced by the Alabama Cooperative Extension System Farm and Agribusiness Management Team at Auburn University in Auburn, Alabama. For additional information on the Farm and Agribusiness Management Team and other ACES programs, please visit our website at www.aces.edu.